Good morning, friends. On this fifth Sunday in Lent, which is St. Patrick's Day this year, our gospel reading is John 12, 20 through 33. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our gospel passage today continues the message we were reading last week in John 3 about Jesus being lifted high on the cross so that believers might have eternal life. But this particular passage comes right after Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which we will celebrate next week on Palm Sunday. And that event came right after Jesus had raised his dear friend Lazarus from the dead. Some Greeks who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during this time went to Philip and said, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Jesus' reputation was spreading, and people thought they knew what this Messiah and his kingdom were all about. However, there was much misunderstanding still. Jesus' end was near. And the Gentiles who believe, like the Greeks who came to Jesus in this passage, will be welcomed into the kingdom. Jesus said, unless a kernel falls into the ground and dies, it remains but a single seed. But if it dies, it will produce many seeds. The man who loves his life in this world will lose it, but the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. These are hard words for people who love and follow Jesus to hear. He's talking about how death can bear fruit, his death and their deaths. He's said all this before, again and again. He said it to them in Mark 8, 34 and 35. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for me and for the gospel will save it. But they haven't gotten it, and the hour has come. He's talking about hating life in this world. More hard words. What he was saying to his disciples and what he is saying to us in these words is difficult to hear. At least it means that we must value our spiritual lives above our physical lives. We must focus on serving God and our neighbors, even if it means suffering. 
and we can see the impact that Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection and the suffering of the martyrs had on the spread of the kingdom and on the birth of the church. In the Acts of the Apostles in the New Testament, we read of bold preaching and healings and resurrections and stonings and crucifixions. God worked in mysterious ways, to be sure, using Saul, the persecutor of so many Christians, and the man who oversaw the stoning of Stephen as an apostle who would do more than any other to create and support churches and spread the gospel. There have been many martyrs throughout history, and there will continue to be many more before Jesus comes again. The good news and the promise of Christ is that all who lose their lives for the sake of the gospel are promised great reward. When Jesus knew that his time on earth was drawing to an end, his heart was heavy. And he says in today's passage, Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was this very reason I came to this hour. You may remember that when Jesus prays in the Garden of Gethsemane before his crucifixion in Matthew 26, he asks God to let this cup pass from him, but for God's will to be done. Here in John's account, Jesus, although troubled, is absolutely sure of the reason for this hour. This is God's plan of salvation for humankind. It is for this very reason that he has come to this point. Jesus calls on God in verse 28, Father, glorify your name. Then a voice comes from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. And the crowd thinks that it's thunder, and some of them think that it's an angel speaking to Jesus. But Jesus says, this voice was for your benefit not for mine. God had spoken again in an audible voice from heaven and was heard like he was heard at Jesus' baptism and on the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus was shining like the sun and visiting with Moses and Elijah. God has glorified his name and God has plenty of future glory. Plans centered on Jesus and on the cross. Jesus goes on to talk about how he will be lifted up and draw all people to himself. The passage ends with the words, he said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. I don't have any funny stories for you this week. The end of the Lenten season is near. Jesus' words about his death and about radical discipleship he expects of his followers are heavy. This is how we're supposed to feel at this time in this season. As I said last week, it is for our sins, mine and yours, that Jesus was crucified. We were reminded of our sins on Ash Wednesday when palm ashes were placed on our foreheads in remembrance of our mortality, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. We were reminded of the importance of repentance and remembering the gospel. We read the Psalm of David that we read in church today and prayed for God to cleanse us of our sins, create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits within us we should be taking this time to look at our lives, our choices, and our service to Jesus. Do we truly love God with all we have and are? And do we love our neighbors as ourselves? Next week, we will celebrate the King of Kings triumphal entry into Jerusalem. We will cheer him on and honor and praise him. We will wave palms and shout hosannas. But let's remember, as we have today, what was getting ready to happen. Now is the time 
to contemplate both the sadness and the promise of the cross. So we will be well prepared to experience a joyful resurrection celebration on March 31st. And calling us to suffer and die with him, Jesus calls us to live with him and share in his glory. In today's epistle reading, Hebrews 5, we read, Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. And John 10.10, 10, the scripture that has been on the pulpit for many years now, and one that I often share with you is, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. A British Anglican priest and poet, Robert Hawker, wrote, wrote in An Abundant Harvest around 1800. Had Jesus not descended to the grave, how would he have been the life-giving, soul-quickening root of all his church and people? But now, by this one precious corn of wheat falling into the ground and dying, how hath the garner of God been filled and is now continuously filling with his seed? Jesus calls us to that life life everlasting, for which he went to prepare our place. He calls us to look at him and draw near to him, exalted on the cross, to believe and to obey, for he alone is the way, the truth, and the life, and he offers that life to you and to me, and I know I do not deserve that life. But that is what God's grace and glory are all about. Hallelujah. <laughs>